webinar. Francesco Vitriani is the marketing manager for Viva Biocell, an Italian company focused on the development, manufacturing and commercialization of bioreactor systems for automated cell culturing. And Frank Barry is senior scientist at the UHN Arthritis Program at the Cremble Research Institute and professor of cellular therapy at the Regenerative Medicine Institute. National University of Ireland in Galway. His research institutes, in, uh, sorry, his research interests include stem cell biology and the development of cell-based repair strategies for osteoarthritis. And he is the principal investigator on Kalen, the Kalen Project, coordinator on the ADIPOA2 clinical trial and senior investigator in the AutoStem, Respine and StarStem projects. And I am very much looking forward to what both of them have to say. So without further ado, over to you, Francesco. Thank you, Jessica. And thanks to the uh, advanced therapist team for the introduction and for setting up this webinar. I'm very happy to be here today and to share with you an overview of our uh, technologies for automated cell expansion. And I'm also very happy to share this stage with Professor Frank Barry. I will start the presentation by providing you uh, an overview of the NAND001 and NAND Excel systems for cell expansion. And um, I will focus on those features that may help uh, the manufacturing process of a cell therapy to be compliant with the GMP guidelines. <clears throat> I will then leave the word to Professor Barry, who will give you uh, feedback as a lead user of our technologies. And then I will show you how these automated systems may help in increasing the productivity and decreasing the costs of cell therapies. And I will conclude by um, giving you some examples of the current ongoing applications and the clinical use that is being made with our technologies. I will start by quoting um, some of the most relevant recommendations that are contained in the um, guidelines for GMP uh, compliant manufacturing of advanced therapies, which are intended to guarantee primarily the safety of these treatments. Therefore, the first key aspect that is taken into consideration is the prevention of contamination and cross-contamination. Therefore, the, uh, the use of closed systems and single-use disposable is strongly recommended, as it is the implementation with aseptic connectors, sterilizing filters, and the uh, generation of particles that should be minimized during these processes. Finally, a key aspect that must be considered is the continuous monitoring of these processes and traceability that's, that must be ensured throughout the process. So I will now walk you through our NANT001 and NANT Excel system, and I will show how these have been designed to meet all of these requirements. You see here a picture of the NANT001 on the left, which has been released on the market in 2017, and the NANT Excel on the right, which is on the market since 2019. Uh, so the NAND001 is a bioreactor system uh, for automated cell expansion that has been designed evolving from those uh, manual cell culture principles and developed to overcome all the challenges and limitations linked to the traditional manual inefficient procedures. Therefore, it's designed to achieve a safe, robust, traceable and cost-effective expansion at small scale uh, with uh, the compliance of these processes uh, with the uh, GMP guidelines. Uh, it is composed by a bioreactor and by a single um, disposable unit that we call cartridge, which is in this case um, composed by a single cell culture chamber. On the other hand, the Nantec cell is being designed uh, to achieve also uh, an automated subculturing process as a competitive feature. And therefore, uh, it is possible with this system to obtain larger yields, so a large number of cells at the end of the process, also starting 
from very small quantities of input material. It shares many of the features of the Nanta 001, including imaging, remote monitoring, and in-process controls. In this case, the, uh, the system is based on uh, um, a disposable unit implemented with two separate culture chambers, a small one, 175 square centimeters, and a larger one, five layers flask. Both uh, the systems share this uh, same principle, where an input <coughs> material is put inside the cartridge, which is a closed system, sterile, single-use and barcoded, which is hosted in the bioreactor. That's providing all the automation of cell expansion, harvesting, as well as the process monitoring to get, at the end of the process, uh, cell suspension ready for downstream processing and all the related information that are reported in the cell culture report. You see here uh, a picture of the NAND001 cartridge where the core is the cell culture flask, in this case, the single flask of 636 square centimeters, which is connected on one side to some input bags and auxiliary input bags, and on the other end to an output bag for waste and a harvesting bottle to uh, collect the cell suspension at the end of the process. The system is also equipped with this uh, sampling ports that are one-way valves that allow you to withdraw the sample without opening the circuit, so keeping the sterility. And also with these sterile connectors and the disconnector. These are a very um, easy and straightforward solution to connect and disconnect the components to the system by keeping the sterility and allowing your uh, um, process to be uh, run also in a class D environment. And there is no need of welding or cutting the tubes. In this picture, you see represented the Nantex cell cartridge where you have input bags, auxiliary input bags, you have the waste output bag. And in this case, instead of the harvesting bottle, you have a harvesting bag. As for the NAND001, you have the sampling ports and the sterile connectors and disconnector. But as you can clearly see, the main difference here is the presence of two separate cell culture chambers. A small 175 uh, culture flask and the second five layers larger flask uh, with a surface of about 3,000 square centimeters. This is because the Nantex cell system is able to do an automated subculturing from the starting small flask to the larger one. In this case, you will be able to do the seeding and first phase of expansion in the small flask and automatically subculture the cells into the five layers flask for a further expansion. So you will be able to get a larger yield and also uh, have the possibility to start from a lower amount of uh, input material. Moreover, this is key for all those processes that require a passage to, uh, to select the cells. You see here the two bioreactors that are uh, composed by a thermostatic compartment for temperature and CO2 management and are also equipped with a touch screen display and a barcode reader. So let's have a closer look to the NANT001 bioreactor. You see that here the flask is hosted inside the bioreactor in this removable tray. We have a peristaltic pump and pinch tubes valves for the movement of fluids. We have a temperature probe, a pH estimation device, and most interestingly, we have an integrated imaging system. This is an integrated microscope based on liquid lens technology, which is fully automated and autofocusing uh, customizable in terms of number of fields you want to acquire and time schedule of acquisition. 
this is not only providing very nice pictures as you can see here from this example but uh, thanks to the presence of a specific algorithm the system is also able to finally estimate the confluency of cells in a vision so with this feature you can identify the optimal time frame for cell harvesting because you can uh, program the bioreactor to harvest the cell at a specific confluency, usually 90% or 95% in our experience. And therefore, when the um, bioreactor reads the 95% confluency, it does automatically the harvesting of the cells. Here you see a representation, a picture of the uh, Nantec cell bioreactor, where you clearly see the presence of the two separated cell culture chambers that are hosted in this removable tray, which is able to do uh, some complex movements on two axes. We have the peristaltic pump and valves for the fluids, movements, temperature probes, we have an integrated CO2 management system and as for the NAND001, we have the integrated imaging system. Uh, both the trays where the uh, flasks are hosted, both in case of NAND001 and NANTEXL, are able to, uh, to do some uh, different movements like tilting and shaking to mimic those manual operations that are done under the laminar hood by, uh, by the operators, uh, usually. This is uh, in order to achieve an accurate seeding of cells or distribute the regions and the nutrients. Uh, and also this allows an efficient filling and emptying of the flasks. So you can program the bioreactor to do some gentle shakes in case of rinsing or to roughly shake uh, at a higher speed in the phases of detaching. So everything is customizable in terms of frequency, duration, speeds and angles of these movements. Moreover, the Anantec cell uh, is also able to perform uh, movements on two axes in order to perfectly managing the uh, positioning of the multi-layer flask. And also in this case, any uh, movement is customizable by the operator. Both um, our systems are equipped with a barcode reader uh, that allows you to keep a complete traceability of both operators and disposables. And all the in-process parameters can be monitored both from the um, bioreactor screen and remotely thanks to this web app. So you will always have under your uh, control temperature, CO2, confluency level, as well as any alarm uh, or warning that happens during the, uh, the process. So without the need to, to get inside the facility uh, to, to check these parameters. Moreover, you uh, uh, will be also able to look at your cells from outside the laboratory. So you, you can understand very well that this web app will save a lot of your time, uh, avoiding you to go inside the clean room just to, to check the parameters or to, to look at the cells and estimate the confluence. In any case, at the end of the uh, process, the system provides you with a cell culture report that is summarizing any parameter and any event occurred during the process. So you have a unique run ID and the registration of a lot of parameters, including loading, uh, sampling, uh, and so on. You have also a summary of temperature and CO2, as well as the confluency that have been read during the process, and any alarm or warning is reported. Um, additionally, you can also download all the raw data that include all the readings of these parameters, as well as all the uh, microscopic images that have been acquired during the process. Um, the creation and customization of the automated protocols are possible thanks to uh, this 
um, application, software application that we call NAND Protocol Maker, that is basically able to translate your manual SOPs into an automated process to be uploaded on the bioreactor. And anything can be customized, including temperature, CO2 set points, as well as any um, movement of fluids, uh, movement of uh, the tray uh, schedule for acquisition of the images and so on. So going back to my first slide, um, we have seen how these technologies can really meet all of these uh, requirements that are um, reported in the guidelines starting from the um, prevention of cross-contamination. As you have seen, we have closed systems and we use single-use disposable. We also use aseptic connectors and filters, and there is no generation of particles in the environment. Um, finally, as we have seen from the last slide, the continuous monitoring and traceability are really ensured and provided by the system itself. Uh, moreover, if we uh, see it from a more general point of view, these guidelines also tells us that um, the compliance with the GMP requirements uh, is for sure um, easier uh, when we use an automated equipment. And there are a lot of advantages in terms of product quality. Um, moreover, um, these guidelines tell us that the use of these systems in the grade D is accepted since they are closed systems and for the same reasons for the same reason um, more bioreactors and more processes can be run in parallel uh, this uh, as you can uh, easily understand will help your process to be scaled up so having the possibility of running more processes at the same time in the same room. I will now um, leave the word to Professor Berry, who will uh, talk about his experience with our NAND001 uh, system. So thank you very much, Professor Berry. Thank you very much, um, Francesco, and I'm really happy to be able to uh, participate in um, in uh, this presentation today because it gives me an opportunity to talk about the experience we've had in uh, using the NANT001 uh, bioreactor. Uh, we have a very strong interest in cell manufacturing here. We have a fully GMP compliant um, manufacturing facility. It's called the Centre for Cell Manufacturing Ireland and uh, this facility has been producing GMP grade cell products for many years and uh, so we have a good deal of experience in manual processing and we understand the urgent need for um, uh, automated solutions. Um, I put together this slide to try to summarize all of the obstacles that we've encountered and what we see as the significant um, technical, logistical and scientific gaps that still need to be filled in the context of delivering MSC therapy to patients in an effective uh, in a cost-effective and efficient manner. And these gaps relate to the biological um, uh, issues such as the potency of the cells, understanding the mechanism of action, understanding the host immune system response, and the logistic, logistical problems, uh, namely new isolation methods, new um, uh, approaches for cell expansion, the urgent need for xenofree culture, and uh, the need to develop uh, more streamlined methods for delivering these cells to uh, to the patient. So we've tried to address um, um, these questions in a variety of different research projects. And of course, uh, at this moment, we're talking about new isolation and uh, expansion methods. So we've had a very particular focus on osteoarthritis um, over the last number of years and this has been the target of our clinical trials and of our manufacturing efforts. The reason why we take an interest in this disease is because it's a major unaddressed disease with an exceptionally high global burden. Uh, it represents a very significant cost in terms of direct healthcare costs. It also uh, represents a very significant burden in terms of indirect costs um, 
associated with lost income, lost productivity, and so on. And despite that, there isn't any approved intervention of any kind, no therapy or drug that is disease modifying and prevents the progressive destruction of the OA joint. And of course, as populations age and as lifestyles change and obesity rises, the burden of osteoarthritis gets more and more significant. And so the need to provide effective disease modifying treatments becomes um, um, much more uh, important. So the point being that there is no unambiguous or definitive conclusion yet regarding the efficacy of MSC treatments for osteoarthritis, and we need phase three studies. These are studies where we'll be treating in clinical trials uh, several hundred patients, and so we need to have a very effective uh, and efficient manufacturing protocol to do this. Um, when we look at these clinical treatments or these clinical trials, we need to be able to design them in such a way that they'll be fully randomized, fully uh, blinded, uh, placebo controlled, and that they involve outcome measures that are selected to distinguish between symptom modifying and disease modifying effects because it's particularly important um, in this disease that we can find disease modifying outcomes. And because, and this is the subject of today's um, presentation, because of the complexity and high cost of cellular therapies, um, we need to be able to show this, this kind of outcome. And that would include, of course, in the context of clinical trial design, uh, the use of MRI and radiographic assessment um, uh, mm -hmm. of the outcome uh, of the treatment. So we've been involved for the last several years in the adipoate clinical studies. This is uh, two clinical trials of phase one, which was completed in 2015, and a phase two, which is currently underway. Um, these involve the isolation and expansion of autologous adipose-derived cells um, and delivery of these to the knee joint in patients that have moderate to severe osteoarthritis. So the protocol is as follows. Uh, the patients come in, they undergo a small abdominal liposuction, uh, as you see here, and something like 20 grams or so of uh, fat tissue is harvested from the abdomen. That's sent to the uh, cell manufacturing facility. And then this rather complex, costly and laborious manufacturing protocol is, is carried out. It involves production of the SVF, the stromal vascular fraction, um, isolation of the cells from this, plating of the cells, um, uh, and then um, expansion, feeding, media change, uh, and finally harvesting of the cells. Uh, so this is a 14-day process currently from the point of a harvesting of the lipoaspirate to the point of having the dose ready for delivery to the patient. And then at regular intervals along the way, there are in-process quality control steps and then uh, critical release tests that are done to ensure that the cell product manufactured according to this protocol meets uh, stringent release criteria. So we understood very quickly that this is an inefficient and very expensive process. It requires significant uh, personnel um, commitment and uh, there's a limit to what can be done. So in really only one, possibly two um, patient batches can be manufactured at any one time. So we needed a solution to this problem that would allow multiple batches to be manufactured simultaneously. And that's where we think the NANT bioreactor system um, uh, becomes valuable. So we've carried out a validation of the NANT system. We've done this under full GMP compliance within our GMP manufacturing facility. And this was done by two of our GMP development scientists, um, Neil Duffy and John Fitzgerald. They carried out all the experiments I'm going to talk about right now. And the design of the study is as summarized here. We, we essentially replicated as closely as possible the ADIPOA expansion protocol, but using the NANT bioreactor. And so we did this, um, we did three independent runs under full GMP uh, conditions we assessed all of the parameters that we also assess for the uh, adipose study, uh, namely um, cell viability, cell yield, surface phenotype, um, differentiation capacity uh, and sterility involving um, both bacterial uh, testing and mycoplasma testing. And so the methods that we used are um, summarized here. We took uh, MSCs from three healthy donors, um, using an alpha MEM supple supplemented with FBS and growth factors. We carried out a media change, uh, sorry, the cells receded as you see here, 
and then immediate change after 24 hours and at 50% confluency and then the harvesting the cells uh, 24 hours before or so, sorry after a 90% confluency was was reached um, in terms of the results these are summarized here what you're seeing here is the yield comparing the cells expanded in the NAND bioreactor with cells from the same uh, tissue source expanded using the manual protocol and you also see on the left the uh, morphological appearance of the cells expanded in the bioreactor versus uh, those using the traditional uh, flask based system and you can see that they're comparative there's a slight improvement in terms of yield using the bioreactor compared to the manual system and the morphology is um, similar the sort of adherent fibroblastic morphology typical of, of MSC so the viability of the cells then in all of the experiments was greater than 95 percent in terms of immunophenotypic analysis this is measuring the um, um, selected cell surface markers using flow cytometry you can see under all conditions in the manual protocol and in the bioreactor protocol all of the uh, cell batches passed and you can see here comparative results comparable results in terms of um, adipogenesis and uh, osteogenesis so the cells that emerged from this um, manufacturing protocol whether it was using the manual traditional method or the automated bioreactor uh, had the expected immunophenotype and the expected differentiation protocol so we see from these experiments and a, a few things number one it's perfectly possible to expand cells using this bioreactor in a fully GMP compliant fashion and it's also possible to uh, prepare cells that comply fully with all of the release criteria that we need to see for our um, uh, GMP production um, it's also much more efficient in terms of labor and I know Francesco is going to talk about this in a moment but we uh, uh, it's it, it requires less hours um, less person hours to to do the expansion using the, uh, the the bioreactor of course it's possible for multiple bioreactors to run simultaneously and uh, of course the bioreactor runs 24 7 um, and so we have that uh, improvement in in efficacy so as far as we can see right now the type of bioreactor um, uh, system that we're talking about today is potentially an effective um, a solution for the uh, problems that I talked about earlier namely the inefficiencies and high costs associated with cell manufacturing for uh, uh, studies such as the adipoid clinical trials so in summary uh, we get comparable results with the bioreactor compared to uh, uh, cells expanded using traditional protocols um, we get relatively comparable yields of cells um, and the um, phenotypic characteristics of those cells in terms of the yield viability expression of surface markers differentiation capability are consistent uh, the batch release criteria are um, um, in compliance with those that are required by our quality system so it's an effective option and um, it's uh, as, as we move forward into later stage clinical trials which with a much higher manufacturing demand uh, the anticipation is that this is a very effective solution. So that's it. Thank you very much. And back to you, Francesco. Hello. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Barry, um, for, uh, for your nice presentation. Uh, and I will now uh, go on and somehow um, explaining some of the details that you provided regarding the costs of these therapies that are currently probably the um, greatest limitation uh, that stops these therapies to be spread um, and I will uh, I will show how uh, our systems can really somehow increase the productivity of these processes as well as lower the costs of the manufacturing so we have developed um, a cost model with the objective of comparing the ATMP manufacturing process with a similar manual protocol in a scenario of 150 um, 
batches per year to be carried out in one GMP uh, facility. So the process that we have analyzed is the same that have, has been presented by Professor Berry. So um, the production of MSCs uh, from lipoaspirate expanded in vitro. And we have analyzed all the relevant manufacturing costs, um, including both the upstream and downstream phases, as well as the expansion phase with the uh, NANT system. So we have analyzed and calculated all the fixed costs, like direct costs of facility, equipment, and so on, and the indirect costs, like uh, running costs, insurance, etc. And also the variable costs of labor, consumable, reagents, quality control tests. So uh, the, uh, the first thing that we have analyzed is the productivity with the assumption of having a facility that um, is working for 300 days in a year and for a process that requires four people. So two lab technicians, one quality assurance uh, manager and one qualified person uh, for a process uh, that lasts about eight days. And another assumption uh, that we have made is that the bioreactors can be installed in a class uh, grade D uh, facility. So you see that um, with the same uh, facility, the same personnel, and with the um, use of four bioreactors instead of the manual process, you can increase your productivity of three times according to this model. And not only, um, this uh, is also having a great impact on the costs for manufacturing because the implementation with an automated uh, system is able to reduce the fixed cost of about 52%, mainly because of the reduction of facility costs. The variable costs are reduced of about 40%, in this case, mainly because of the labor reduction um, with an overall decrease reduction of cost per dose, uh, which is 43% um, according to our model. So uh, this is really a technology that may uh, increase your productivity on one side, decrease the costs on the other, and allowing these therapies to be in the long run cheaper, sustainable, and available for a larger number of patients. Uh, I will now um, conclude by providing you with some examples of applications that uh, are being made with our technologies, starting from a um, series of experiments of expansion of mesenchymal stem cells in the NAN001 system, starting from bone marrow. In these experiments, uh, starting from 100 ml of bone marrow with the NAN system in about two weeks, we are able to uh, get around 40 million MSCs with a very, very good viability and with a typical expression of MSCs markers. This is another example of MSCs expansion in the NAND001 system, but in this case, starting from adipose tissue. Uh, you can see that in about 10 days, in this case, you can get around 50 million mesenchymal stem cells with a very good viability again, and with a typical expression of MSCs markers. Um, in this slide, uh, you will clearly see the difference and advantage of Nantec cell with respect to the NAN001, because starting from just two milliliters of adipose tissue, which is really, really a small quantity, in about the same uh, amount of days, you may get up to 400 million MSCs. So basically you do the seeding in the small flask, the T175, you proceed with the expansion until confluency. And at this point, the bioreactor itself does the automated subculturing from the small flask to the five layer flask for further expansion until confluency to get those 400 million cells 
with a very high viability and again with a typical expression of MSCs markers. Beside the MSCs, uh, there is a series of other possible applications that we are uh, carrying out, carrying on with uh, some partners of ours that include also skin regeneration with different kinds of cell types and also uh, some immunotherapeutic uh, applications with cells like NK, T cells, dendritic cells, CAR T, which are at a very early stage of development in this last case. Um, I uh, want to conclude by showing you um, how the NAND001 system is being already uh, used in the clinic for the manufacturing of a cell target product in Slovenia for the treatment of knee osteoarthritis. So in this case, uh, um, patients suffering from osteoarthritis are treated with the injection of MSCs that are expanded starting from lipoaspirate. Uh, and so 10 million of these cells are intraarticularly injected and the patients are being followed up for one year. All the most typical orthopedic scores of pain and functional scores are being assessed as well as the MRI um, images will be uh, evaluated um, and compared from the baseline to the uh, one-year follow-up. So we have just <clears throat> collected the three months follow-up and we are already uh, appreciating a very nice and significant improvement of all of these scores. So uh, the manufacturing process in this case is very similar to the one that Professor Barry showed. Uh, so uh, we have the isolation of stromal vascular fraction from the lipoaspirate, which is seeded and expanded in a serum-free medium in the NAND001. This is done in a cell factory uh, in Slovenia. And uh, also uh, during the expansion and also on the um, starting material, several tests are performed to verify uh, sterility, uh, as well as this is done in the final product to ensure the safety of this treatment. Uh, eventually, the cells are resuspended in saline solution and injected in the patient. You can see that for all these samples, despite the variability in the quantity of adipose tissue, uh, we uh, were uh, always able to get a sufficient number of cells with a very high viability. Therefore, uh, um, this, um, this treatment is really went on very smooth with the cooperation uh, with EduCell in Slovenia. Um, to conclude, um, you have seen uh, today how the NAND systems are commercially available uh, platforms for automated cell expansion that have been designed to ease your process compliance with many of the GMP requirements. They are also able to allow for scale up of, of the production and decrease of manufacturing costs. You have seen that several applications can be supported and that there is the current ongoing use of these technologies for human cell. I thank you very much for your attention and I will be happy to, uh, to answer to any of your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Francesco, and thank you, uh, Professor Barry. Uh, that, that was very interesting indeed. Um, anyone who has any questions, uh, you can type them on the using the control panel and I will field your questions. We've already had one or two coming in. Um, so Jenny Prang has asked several questions um, and she said, if possible to reveal, uh, who did Mr. Vitriani work together with to develop these bioreactors? Are you allowed to disclose that information or is that something that you would like to discuss with her? Um, no, we, we are not willing to discuss this today, but we can uh, have a separate conversation maybe. Okay, yeah, she, I think she's got a couple of follow-up questions like um, costs um she also asked how is ipc sampling acquired during the production process 
Uh, sorry, I, I didn't get uh, this question. How is IPC sampling acquired during the production process? In process control? Uh, yeah, so the, um, the systems are able to, um, to acquire different in process controls like temperature, CO2, uh, since we have uh, temperature probes and CO2 uh, sensors, uh, if, if this is the question. Yeah, and I think she's got one more actually. Um, how is IPC sampling? Oh, sorry, that, that one was, she asked that one twice. Um, <clears throat> I, I also want to add that besides temperature and CO2, other process um, parameters that we can measure in, uh, are the, the pH. Uh, since in the NAND001 we have a pH estimation device. And of course the, um, the cell confluency, which is based on the um, acquisition of images. Great, thank you. I guess for the other uh, questions, uh, Jenny will be in touch with you. Uh, I'll connect you guys by email so you can follow okay, up. Um, Maximilian Otterson asks, is it possible to use carriers in the system for culture of suspension adaptive cells? We have never tried that kind of application. So um, the applications that we have, uh, that we are familiar with, are based on cells in adhesion or cells in suspension, but without the use of carriers. But this is something that we may discuss. Okay, great. Thank you. And uh, Jorge or George Blanco asks, is it possible to take culture samples to analyze metabolites? Uh, yeah, this is possible. Um, we, um, our uh, disposable cartridges are equipped with some sampling port that allow the sampling of the material um, thanks to these one-way valves that also ensure that sterility is kept without opening the circuit. So you can sample during the expansion, even if your bioreactor is running a grade D environment, without the risk of um, contamination. Great, thank you very much. Um, and I have a question for you guys. Um, so we've seen how NANT systems can efficiently expand cells in adhesion like MSCs. And you mentioned that also cells in suspension can be cultivated. Can you specify which are the other cell types that have been expanded in these systems? Yeah, so um, regarding cells in addition, um, we have experience in expanding uh, also uh, cells for skin regeneration, in this case, keratinocytes, fibroblasts, as well as endothelial cells. Um, we have, some of our partners have also experience in uh, cultivating cells in suspension, uh, specifically NK cells, T cells and pills for immunotherapeutic applications. And as I mentioned, uh, we are also in the very er early phases of um, development of CAR T processing. Great, thank you very much. Um, and another question, um, how does Viva Biocell support the customer in the transition from manual protocol to the automated process? with the system yeah uh, okay so um, basically uh, once we get in touch with a uh, with a customer we do together an analysis of the process and the feasibility study to verify if that process may be suitable with for these technologies after that viva Bicell is able to do uh, some uh, pilot experiments in order to fine tune and design the specific automated processes that can be also carried out in our facility before moving the, uh, to the customer facility for, again, a fine tuning of this process and Viva Biosel will provide support until this will be completed. Great, thank you. Another question from uh, Jorge Blanco. Um, is the software CFR21.11 compliant? I hope I read that out right. Doesn't mean much to me, I'm afraid. Yeah, I understand. 
So um, this is being designed uh, to, to, to go in that direction and uh, all of the features of the software can, uh, can satisfy. Yeah, so it is, it is compliant. Great. Thanks very much. And uh, one, one more question from me. How many of these systems are currently installed worldwide? Uh, so uh, we have around 40 units installed in the US, mainly in California and Colorado. And then uh, there are around 10, uh, 10 bioreactors already installed in Europe as well. Okay. Um, I think that seems to be all the questions we've got. This is your last chance if anyone's got any questions to, to send them through. Um, just, uh, otherwise, sorry, yes, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, uh, quickly add to the um, um, uh, uh, question about the different cell types and the use of uh, microcarrier adapted cells. So, um, in the context of MSV expansion protocols, we've done a lot of work on um, the expansion of these cells on different microcarriers, and it seems to work very well. The challenge very often is not the expansion of the cells, but the successful detachment of the cells from the uh, from the microcarrier. But uh, so that's, that's work that's, um, that's ongoing in our lab. In terms of different cell types that could be adapted for expansion using these bioreactors, we're going to do some work involving induced pluripotent stem cells, MSCs derived from these, and chondrocytes derived from these. So we will have um, additional experience in uh, pluripotent stem cell expansion using the, uh, the bioreactor. Great. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, no more questions coming through, so I guess that leaves it to me to thank you both again for a really interesting webinar. Um, I hope uh, the audience got something out of that, enjoyed listening to Francesco and Frank's insights. Um, and again, thanks for joining us, guys. Thanks to our audience for joining us as well. And um, stay safe and have a lovely afternoon wherever you are. This recording will be shared as well. Um, tomorrow afternoon for anyone who missed anything. So have a, have nice afternoons, everyone, and take care. Thank you Thanks very much. Bye -bye. Have a good Thanks. day. Bye. -bye. Bye.